My name is Heidi Mortensen. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and certified Daring Way facilitator. The video you are about to watch is a presentation that I gave at a women's retreat for Destiny Image Church down in um, Lanesboro, Minnesota. Um, the beginning of the video get, got cut off because where we were at was a very remote area and the internet was not very good. So I'm doing this introduction um, to let you kind of introduce the video. Um, this is my very first time ever preaching. I've done um, speaking events and I've also done different um, different messages online, um, but never live in front of people. So it was awesome to be able to um, speak in front of other women, um, other believers. And um, the presentation is about how to really be vulnerable and be yourself um, and be your, just be your authentic self. I think a lot of times we hear about it and we talk about it, um, but don't know how to actually do it. So I share some of my testimony. Um, I get really personal in this, in this presentation so you can, um, and, and also there is some um, moments where you can actually get ministry, where you can really dive into your personal relationship with Jesus instead of mine or someone else's, um, that really the most important thing is that you are able to connect with God and the way that he sees you and how beautiful that he sees you. Um, so thank you so much for watching this and I pray that you um, are blessed. Um, I am like so excited to be here because <laughs> I need this too. Um, I was really bummed that it got canceled last year. Um, I got a prophetic word last January that I had to preach. I'm like, I am not, like, what the heck? It kind of actually freaked me out. It wasn't something that I was, like, asking for or praying about. Um, I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, so I work in mental health. Um, and But I'm also saying, use me, God, whatever you need me for. I'm, like, saying, yes, you know, whatever you want. And so, okay, I'll, I'll do that, you know, so I'm... I'm, it's an honor, and I'm, I want to make him proud, and I want to make, you know, this is about him, this isn't about me, um, but this is my first time ever preaching in front of real people, so I've done it on my like, Facebook, <laughs> but not, you know, I've spoken in front of other people, but never actually, like, preaching, um, so this really is an honor, and I'm excited to just be his voice like it it just is a it's an awesome feeling and again it's not about me um but it's just what he's it's just kind of it's just very interesting how he said you say okay god and then he just like gives you these things that you didn't necessarily really ask for um so it's just really cool how the how the kingdom is um and so one of the things that i was thinking about this weekend is that each one of you took a weekend of your life to come here and so there's something about each one of you that you are saying yes to your identity in Christ because you came here for yourself. I think a lot of times we don't understand that and we don't do that, but you're being Jesus just by being here and just by saying yes to this weekend and saying, I'm going to love myself enough to give myself a women's retreat and relax and let go. So that right there is Jesus in each one of you. And so God's getting all the glory for that because he wants us to love ourselves. He wants us to just be ourselves. And so my message tonight really is about us being ourselves and us being authentic. Um, God's the, the carnation. I mean, I think that that's absolutely beautiful that he wants us to just be us. Like he doesn't want us to be anyone else. Um, and I'm going to talk about how we can do this by being vulnerable um, with ourselves, with Jesus, and also with other people. Um, one of the things that I do, I'm, um, if any of you are familiar with Brene Brown, mm -hmm. so she is a social worker, and I'm certified in her work. Um, I don't want to go too much into the heady stuff. I want to stay in what God wants. But the message she has is actually in line with the cross, which yeah. is vulnerability. And so I'm going to bring in a little bit of that in tonight. Um, because it's really actually what can kind of break down how we make the word go from our head, like get manifested, like how we can actually encounter it instead of just, oh, this is so true and I believe this, but let's actually get it manifested. Um, so um, what my, my hope is is that Romans 12, 12, 2 will actually be happening this weekend. So it's already happening in all of our lives all the time. Um, but that's really what I'm hoping is that we can kind of keep moving it from our head into head into our body. 
Um, and the advice I got for this weekend was for me to just have fun, be myself, um, just let loose and, and not stress. Um, and really just show you guys how God has actually shown me his heart. So I'm going to actually take you through some of that, some of the revelations that I've gotten, some of the mistakes that I've made. Um, and, and really it is also, like I said, encouragement, vulnerability, and authenticity. Um, so one of the most influential ways for us to actually show people Jesus is for us to be Jesus. Okay, that's one of the most influential ways, which means we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which means that we need to continue to die and let him live in us. So we need to allow the Bible to actually come alive in us. All right, so I'm thinking like Hebrews 4.12, how the Bible can come alive in us. We can die and we, the Bible is like, you know, we're this walking Bible. <laughs> um, so I'm going to just read Hebrews 4.12 to you. So for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joint and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intention of the heart. So when we do this, we're actually selfless because we're loving ourselves and we're letting the word come alive and we're actually being more of Jesus. Um, and when we do this, you guys, we actually have the capacity to then love more people. I think sometimes we think, oh, I can't love myself. It's too selfish. Or, you know, sometimes the world will judge that. But the reality is that's what we need to do because then we can, then we have the capacity, then we can love other people. Does that make sense? Um, so cognitively, <laughs> the word, I use the therapy word, I probably shouldn't be using that. So in our heads, in our brains, we know this stuff. And for me as a therapist and a mental health therapist, I'm like, how can we get this manifested from our head and into our bodies? How can we actually move this through? Um, and so it's getting that transformational knowledge. It's hearing testimonies, reading the word. I mean, you guys know all this stuff. Um, but it's, it's asking the Holy Spirit, come alive in me and have this, have this actually happen. Okay, so. so currently right now, I um, am attending um, Bethel Supernatural School of Ministry online. Um, and I just started that in January. Um, it's very much out of my element. It's not something, you know, that I, God, it's basically I'm just, okay, God, I'm just kind of on this boat and, all right, I'll do what you, what, what you want me to do. Um, but I am a marriage and family therapist, like I said. Um, I have a business that I started about 13 years ago. We now have like three locations. There's like 25 of us, and my husband now works with, works with us. Um, so it's, it's, I'm kind of taking a different, I wouldn't say I'm taking a different route, but I'm wanting to bring God into that. I'm wanting to bring God into the mental health field. Um, but the motto of it's called BSSM is what they call it, of the school that I attend, is we owe the world an encounter. That's right. And so each one of us carries heaven inside of us. So that means each one of us is bringing the presence of the Lord here. And so I want you to just shift your mindset to that and, and kind of focus on that, like, yes, I'm carrying heaven. I am a vessel of the kingdom, and his presence is here, and it becomes stronger when we are all here together, and so then there's more and more of that anointing, and when we go then out in the world, then we are bringing heaven to that person, and we're bringing heaven wherever it is that, that we're going. Um, and so you guys know that we're three-part being, um, body, soul, and spirit, that we're, uh, we're a spirit that's in a body that has a soul. Okay, And then our souls, our mind, our will, and our emotions soul, our soul is what messes us up. That's where we kind of have some problems. And so I'm hoping that we can break, we can break this down and there can be breakthroughs through this. Um, so really position yourself knowing that I carry the presence of the Lord. His presence is here with you right now. Okay. You don't need me. You just need Jesus in you. Okay. And your spirit man is absolutely perfect. You are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So each one of you is perfect, is Jesus' image, and you're walking with everywhere you go, okay? And so when we start to get more revelation of, like, heaven can expand, like, you can pray for revival, and you can pray for your city, you can pray for your, you know, for the state. It keeps getting bigger the more and more you are able to see 
his authority within you. Okay, it has nothing to do with you. It's you shifting to what the word says. Um, okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this, and I'm going to kind of shift <laughs> to, to share a little bit of revelation of how um, when we're in pain <laughs> and when we struggle with anxiety, with depression, um, with loneliness, um, difficulties with relationships, how this is when it can really get hard. So to me, this is where I'm saying, okay, how do we go from the word when I'm in this really difficult situation with this person? How does this actually come together? How do I have freedom in all these situations? Are you guys tracking with me? All right. Um, so let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a little bit of my story. Um, when I started hear, learning about the prophetic, was, was kind of about four years ago, I'd hear these really amazing testimonies of people who, like, they were a drug, drug addict and God, like, you know, pulled them out and they had this amazing dream or this encounter. And I was like, I don't have that kind of story. And so I, so I want to just let go of comparison for all of you guys. Like, each one of your story is important. Each one of your story matters to God. And when we, when we let our story take over, we let our shame define us, if we, we hide it, then that's what defines us. So we want to be proud of our stories and know that God cares about our stories and let of, instead of like letting it fall to the wayside and hiding shame and hiding our stories, because then it actually has more power. Mm-hmm. So when we can own our stories, we have more authority over it. This is how God can work in us because the power, the same power that rose Jesus from the dead is living in each one of us. It's amazing. Like, I just can't even, each, each time I think about it, I, it's, I, I don't think I've gotten the revelation from it yet. <laughs> so I keep saying it until, until that happens. Um, so I, I was telling you before, I started this practice. Um, I was very much striving. I was very much performing. Um, I was caring about how other people thought of me. I was very much a people pleaser, um, caring very much about how um, people that I had working for me, how they felt, um, also my husband. Um, So I wasn't really, like my priority wasn't God, like I was a Christian, but I'd say say lukewarm. Um, And I really didn't know that I was lukewarm. I think a lot of you guys attend prophetic churches, so you haven't really like been around that. So you understand the prophetic and the lukewarm isn't something that you're as familiar with, but that's where I, that's where I came from. So I didn't know what I didn't know. I just was doing my best. Um, I've been married for 10 years. I have um, three children, four, six, and seven, two girls and a boy. And um, they're very lively and they're very fun. So it's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm excited to just kind of have, <laughs> have a break. They're playing hockey right now. Um, <laughs> But with this striving and with this per- focusing on performance, um, things did not go well in my marriage. Our communication wasn't good. Um, we had a couple mis- we had two miscarriages. Um, I'm, you know, I'm thinking that this is how I'm supposed to be because it's how it looks good on the outside. But in the inside, I wasn't connecting with Father's love at all. Um, and I, w- I didn't even know what that was, <laughs> honestly. But now I do. So this is where like God's like kind of showed me their different revelations of of His love. Um, and I wasn't at like in, for my business, I wasn't asking Holy Spirit advice on all these things. And so you know we're having difficulties, and I'm trying to stay at home, but it's not really working because I'm not asking Holy Spirit. And my husband and I are arguing, and we're we're stressed out, um, and. At one point, it got so bad that I finally was like on my hands and knees, like submitting to God again. And this is when I started getting interested in the prophetic and started learning about miracles and healing. And you guys have heard many of those stories of people having testimonies where they they learn about um, that God actually does this still today. Um, And so I started diving in, going to conferences. That's how I met Deb. Um, um, My husband... My husband heard from God at, at some point that he should leave his bank job and come help run my company. And so he did that. So he took a leave of faith and him and I actually started going to counseling together. So God starts moving. He starts moving. Um, but as he's moving, this is where <laughs> I, I feel like it's kind of like a, a 
freight train. I, it's, I, I, I'm not totally sure in the image, but you know when God's like moving and he has something for you and you're like kind of like the putt-putt back here? <laughs> That's kind of what it was. So like, yup, he's like, here you go, Heidi. Here's this word. Kind of like if you guys ever get a prophetic word or if you read something in the word and you're like, this is for me, but you're like back <coughs> here. You're not grasping it. And that was kind of what it was. So even though like, yeah, God's moving. My husband hears from the Lord. Oh, this is great. But I'm still back here. Not, I'm still an orphan. I'm not knowing who I am. I'm not knowing truly that I'm loved in the identity of who I am, that I am his, his little girl. And I think I still need to strive. I think I still need to perform. I see it out there, and I'm, I'm still pursuing it. I'm still saying, okay, come Holy Spirit. But I'm still frustrated with my husband. I'm still blaming him. And so I can share a little bit of that. My husband came from divorce, um, lots of typical families, but he, he wasn't, hadn't, didn't see healthy relationships and would call me names a lot. And when he'd call me names, I would be shocked and I would just be like oh, so offended and oh my gosh and, and and I should I mean that's fine I'm not I'm not like I'm not wanting to say that that's not a big deal but because I didn't know who I was everything was a shock everything was like oh, so dramatic and it's like I wanted to be like so oh my gosh I am this wonderful Christian that's like I am like going to these conferences and I'm reading and I'm I'm just you know, God's, God's using me to, like, change my family. And so I'm the one that's, like, thinking I'm doing all, all these things because he's calling me names. And, you know, I have one image of us being on vacation. We have a baby and a toddler, and we're arguing about some work thing. Who knows? Um, and he flicks me off. I'm out by the pool. He's inside. He's inside. We're on vacation. This is, like, a restful place. And I, I can see his finger. I can see... And I'm just like, what? Like, I'm tra I felt trapped. Oh, I mean, I could still, like, feel it. Like, I don't want this. Like, how did I get here? How did I get in this place? I'm like, God, you say all these things. Here's the freight train. <laughs> Here's what you say. But I'm over here, and I'm like, what is going on? How do, how do I get your word to, like, move? How do I get encounters and how do I get this when I'm in this place of like torture? I mean, it was like torture, it was trauma. And this is where I'm saying don't compare yourself because that could be like nothing compared to what some of you guys have gone through. <clears throat> um, but for me, I, I mean, it was just sucked. Um, and so in this mismatch <laughs> of what God wants and the things that I was struggling with, and as I'm getting revelation, I started to go through depression. Because the depression was, the depression came from, I thought I like knew everything. I thought I like had it all. I thought I was successful. All, all, all these things, like, because I was so partnered with the world. So when the world started to die, for me, I had, it's like I had to grieve. I had to grieve the, that life, and I know that sounds kind of kind of selfish, even when I'm saying it. I'm like, okay, God, but you have this for me, and I need to let this go. But that's that's really what it felt like. It was like this grieving of I I thought I had everything, yeah. um, and so as I'm starting to die, I'm depressed, I'm hopeless, I'm still going for it. <laughs> I'm still going for what Jesus is saying about me, what God's saying about me. And little by little, the Holy Spirit is, is killing off the world. <laughs> so like little revelation, little revelation, little mini encounters. And the little mini encounters, I mean, all of them were different. Some were from dreams. I know Stephanie said she's had some dreams. Um, I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be like, oh my gosh, I think something changed. <laughs> and I would literally wake up and be like, oh my gosh. I feel like I have some authority. I can actually pray for my husband and it's gonna happen. Like I and like I had a dream, I had a dream, I would have all these different dreams about my husband and I being intimate. Like he showed me 
him and I being intimate, like, like me pursuing him and him pursuing me, I was like, I don't, this isn't happening. This isn't happening in my life, but you're showing me this in a dream. <coughs> and I started to like see my husband more and more how God wanted me to see him. Even though these things are happening, we're not super communicating very well, <laughs> but you know, like in a dream, I would journal and I'd be like venting to God, like, oh, I can't stand this, and I'm blaming this person and complaining about whatever I'm complaining about. Uh, blaming an employee, you know, that's what I would do, I'd blame. And as I'm writing, he would show me a verse. Or he would, he would just show me, I'm your daughter, just sit with me. And I started to learn how to be Mary. But it, it just, it was all these different, it wasn't a big, you know, boom, gone. It was all these just different, like, little mini encounters. And more and more of me was dying, more of him was coming alive. And there still was still some fights, still lots of arguments, still things, even just employee stuff that we were dealing with that was just very heavy and very difficult. But I knew, the, I knew what God was saying. And so I would just keep moving and keep going on the promise of what he was saying. Um, so one thing that started to happen, though, was, you know, when God's like revealing something to you that you don't like? Mm -hmm. Um, it moved from me kind of not liking that <laughs> to where the kindness of God leads us to repentance. Mm -hmm. So like it shifted from little attitude, I know everything, I'm so successful, I got it all, to, oh God, thank you for showing me. Like, thank you for showing me that I've been codependent with my husband. Mm -hmm. Thank you for showing me that I'm putting him before you. Like, that's what I was doing. I was putting my husband before God. So I'd say, thank you for showing this to me. And so it, like, moved me into this place of, like, just this gratefulness of how much he loves me that he was showing me these things that I was doing. Instead of, like, I was this reprimanded little kid. <laughs> like, he just, so it's like he started showing me more of, of his real heart instead of what I thought he was. Some verses that came to me, uh, James 1.6, uh, that he describes as a doubting wave of the sea and tossed by the wind. That was me. Um, eight, or verse 8, that she is a double-minded woman, unstable in all her ways. That was me. And I, in this place, I was like, okay, I don't like that you're saying this to me. Thank you, God, for saying this to me. You know, so I'm going like back and forth. And so it's more of him coming alive. Um, and I was, when I was over in this place of, of being frustrated, I'm in condemnation. Then he's showing me, no, Romans 8.1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So there is no condemnation for any of us. So if any of you are feeling shame, it's not what God wants at all. So if you are, I just break it off of you right now in the name of Jesus. I break off any shame because it's not what he says about you. So let it go. Let it go, let it go into the river, let it go in the cross, like wherever it is that you need to have it go. <laughs> there is no shame at all. So let's just break partnership with it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just let it go. He loves us no matter what, you guys. He loves us no matter what. We get to just be wherever we are at. Even if we're doing something or struggling with something that is not what he wants, he loves us just the way that we are. I was focused on how I feel. I was focused on what I see, what's in front of me. Um, one of the things that I've been working on is a book project um, about being an encourager, so the book is called Brave Encourager, and that is actually one of the things that when you're not encouraging, <laughs> you're focusing on what you see and what you feel, what's right in front of you. So if any of you, I feel like God was saying there are some of you that actually have some family members that you're very worried about and concerned about, and he wants you to not look at what you see and what you feel. He wants you to look at what he sees and feels. 
and really stay on that. And so when we go into a place of being able to encourage, you, you have to be able to see and feel what God sees to even be able to encourage. Yeah. So like if you have someone that in your life that you're worried about, that you're concerned about, and you'll say, oh, oh gosh, I'm so worried about you. Oh gosh, you know, I just see you were late for work again. Or, you know, gosh, you, you came home really late again. And oh, you know, she called me and told me that you weren't there for the kids. Like you're pointing out what you see and what you feel. They already know that. That's right. Okay? We need to point out what God sees. Thank you. you are an amazing man of God. You are such a smart woman. You are so capable. I see so much for your future. I see so much for you. I remember that time when you did this, this, and this, and, and when you were so creative and you created this, and you, you start pulling the gold out, and you point out the things that you see, from that what, what God sees, not what like what, what's going on, <laughs> not what's happening in the world. And what keeps us from doing this is this place of offense. Because we can get so offended, like, I'm so offended that this is happening. I can't believe you're doing this. This is just where I was at with my husband. I'm like, I can't believe he's doing this. I'm so offended. And that offense and that anger and that frustration was keeping me from being able to see what God wanted for me, what God wanted for my husband. And it's the same thing. So thinking about people that you guys have in your life, think about how God sees them and meditate on that. And don't let it go. <laughs> like we, it feels good to talk about what we see, what we feel, and, and what's, what's in the world, but it only lasts like a short period of time. It's not the real fruit. Mm -hmm. So anyways, many encounters, <laughs> many encounters. God continues to keep showing me things. Um, he showed me how to forgive, um, and also like even see like there was one little encounter where he showed me, he showed me my husband as a little boy, and he showed he showed me him as not knowing how to be intimate and not being shown that, and so here I'm talking to this adult who's actually this little kid who doesn't even know what the heck I'm talking about. And so not only am I not encouraging him, I'm making him feel more and more shame because I'm offended and I'm hurt and I'm struggling. But what he needed was me to come from a place of, I know who I am, <laughs> I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am a daughter of the King. I know who I am. I am loved and love on him, even when he's being hurtful to me. That's authority. It was very hard to get there. <laughs> it's very, <laughs> it's, it is so worth it though. Yes, it is so worth it. I, when I was like in this place over here, I had one foot out, I had walls up, and this is what we do to protect ourselves. We think that the walls are what we need to hold up, but it just keeps us from our real identity. It keeps us from freedom. And the trials actually um, don't make you, they reveal you. And so I just kept being more and more revealed through these trials. And so I'm more getting to a place of like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What else do you have for me? What else do you have? Um, a, about a month ago, I, I messaged one of my um, therapists or one of our managers. And I was, I think I actually do this when I let go of my hurt. It was like some, some technique that I'm offloading hurt in an unhealthy way. And I was excited that I realized that I was doing it. Like it was this revelation of like, I'm doing this, I'm offloading hurt this way. And over here, what I, I would have been like in this protective place of like, I don't do anything wrong, but now I'm like actually getting excited. Um, God revealed to me pride. Oh, that was great when he showed me that. Because <laughs> in that place, you guys, when, I, when he showed me that, I was apologized to my husband. I apologized. I actually had a sister that I apologized for, for something that I was offended by. And she, 
didn't even need me to say that, but I felt God wanted me to say that for me. Um, I actually apologized to my whole company. And I said, anything that you feel that you have done wrong, I am the one responsible because I'm the one that owns the company. And I like took responsibility mm -hmm. because what happens, like when you own something, when you own a family, or you're, you're not, you shouldn't say you own a family, but you're the, you're the mom or you're the dad, like people don't, they, they start to make up stories that they do something wrong, even if they do, but we're the one that's in charge. We're the one that's managing. We're the one that's leading. And so if, if there's something that goes wrong, it does fall on us as the leader, as the mom, as the parent, whatever it is, it does. And that's a place of authority. That's a good thing. And I, I don't say this in like a controlling, barking way, but in that restful, relaxed, I know who I am way. So, and I apologize to my managers. I mean, it was like this, <laughs> it was not, not very fun actually. Um, <laughs> However, I was saying, thank you, Jesus, for showing this to me. Because then I'd wake up, you know, like there's just more things that, that he'd show me when this would happen. Because um, when you're in the kingdom, like when you, when you are saved and he has you, there is no way out. So I say that for people that you actually know that are saved, that are struggling right now. Holy Spirit has them. Yes. Yes. Like... God's not going to give up. So your prayers are heard. Your prayers are powerful. It's, it's like too late. They're in the kingdom. <laughs> You're in the kingdom. So we just kind of need to get out of the way, you guys. I think a lot of times we get in the way, our soul takes over, and we just need to let God be God and let go of control and relax, be little kids, and just let him love us. And let him just show us our identity and walk in that place of freedom and relaxation and rest and be Mary's. Yes, we still need to get things done. Yes, I mean, we still need administration. We still need to have processes and structure. But we can't do it if we aren't in that place of knowing who we are. So uh, the two verses that I would say that as I'm talking to you, is Romans 12, 2, that do not conform by, the, um, by this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then also Galatians 2, 20. So these are the two verses that I, like I can, like the Spirit's like got going on right now. Um, that Galatians 2, 20 is that I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that's really what happens, is we're dying. <laughs> and in this time, people would encourage me. Um, I had an aunt who told me about The Power of the Praying Wife. You guys know about, yeah. you guys heard of that book? Mm -hmm. um, totally shifted things. It was, you know, like, God, instead of God changed him, God changed me. So, you know, like, all, all these different, I mean, I could go on and on about those little mini encounters where God revealed more and more to, of himself to me. Um, okay, so I, I want to I shift to, as I've been talking to you, I want to talk about vulnerability with you guys. So as I've been talking to you, <coughs> would you guys say that I'm being vulnerable? Yes. Yeah. yes. And as I'm being vulnerable, how does it make you feel towards me? Good. Closer. Closer. More closer. Okay, so how do you think God feels when we're vulnerable with him? So he wants us to be completely, utterly vulnerable with him. So sometimes we don't know how to do this because we're taught all these bad things about vulnerability. And I want to like break all these, I want to break this off you. <laughs> and I want each of you to have authority over being vulnerable. So that's really my prayer, that I just like declare that, that you all are going to be able to have confidence and authority to be able to be vulnerable, and you just own it. Like, even if you have a struggle, it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm struggling with that. God's working on me. You know, you just own it. It's not something that we need to be all insecure about and, 
and be shameful about because then that means we're caring about what people think. Who's the audience that we care about? The audience of one. Yes, he is the only person that matters. And so even if there is something that you're struggling with, you can ask, Holy Spirit, you know, can, should I say this or whatever? Like, ask him, just filter it through. And if he says, yeah, then you own it. Okay, so I'm gonna get, let me kind of share with you some of the myths of what vulnerability is not, and then I'll tell you what it is. Um, so the first myth is that vulnerability is weakness. Okay, so that is a myth. It's not weakness. But we, a lot of times we grew up believing that. Like you'd hear, some of you may have heard, well, don't be sad or don't be mad, like kind of telling you not to feel a certain way. And the reality is nobody can tell you how to feel or not feel. Those are your feelings. Nobody can change that. They can help you make better choices with those emotions. <laughs> okay, let's do something different with that anger. You know, but again, we've got to be able to let things go with people because they were also like parents. They were doing the best they could with what they had. So we can't, again, we can get in that place of getting offended at people who taught us this, but really that is just kind of how, what they knew and they're teaching it from the way that they were taught. Um, the next one is that I don't do vulnerability, okay? We can't not do it. And another one is that I can go at it alone. We need other people, okay? So we need other people to be able to do vulnerability. Um, you can engineer the uncertainty and discomfort out of it, okay? You can try, but it does not work. Um, and then the other one is that trust comes before vulnerability, so that's a myth. So this is, we'll do this a lot. We'll try to like control the relationship and then be vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable and then trust comes. So I am taking a chance by talking with you guys tonight, sharing some things about my life, knowing that I'm being vulnerable, but I'm trusting that God is having me do this. So yep, and um, Brene Brown calls it a vulnerability hangover, where you like feel like you said too much, and it wasn't received, and it wasn't heard. You know, you didn't receive get empathy back when you're speaking it. And so then you kind of feel that, like, icky, like, what did I do? What did I say? Okay? When that happens, just say, Holy Spirit, reveal to me, what did I, did I do something wrong? Did I say something that you didn't want me to say? And then just <laughs> let him speak. And if he's like, no, you said everything that you needed to say. Move on. Move on. Let it go. Let it go. Do not hold on to, oh, I should have said this, or I should have not said this. Like, <laughs> let it go. But you got to be able to first recognize, like, that icky feeling, and then ask him. And if, let's say you do ask, and he's like, yeah, you know, you said that a little bit too harsh. Okay, then what do you want me to do? I want you to go apologize. Okay, go apologize. You know, like, just ask for clarity. Okay? And then make, an, make a repair or whatever it is that you need to do. But we don't need to stay stuck in this like making up stories that I think this or they think that, because we do this. Mm -hmm. like, and then we go off on this, like rabbit trail and stories that we don't need to be making up. Um, and then the last one, the last myth is that vulnerability is disclosure. So disclosure is you like are going through a divorce and you put all your details on Facebook. That's disclosure. Vulnerability is, you just talk about it with a close friend that you trust. So there's just there's a there's a difference. So disclosure is where there's no boundaries, <laughs> and vulnerability is it's someone that you know you can trust and you can open up to and you can share. It. Um, all right. So the definition of it is um, uncertainty, risk, and emotional exposure. So as I'm sharing with you, there's uncertainty with what's going to happen as I, when I share. There's a risk that I'm taking, and I'm emotionally exposing myself. Okay, that can be kind of scary. However, when I asked all of you, how would you feel towards me as I'm, as, as I'm sharing? It is the cornerstone of courage building. Because I can see in some of you, there's courage that's starting to like, starting to rise like, oh. Gosh, yes, like, I can do this. It's the birthplace of love, belonging, and joy. You feel more connected. You know, you feel safer. You feel like you can be yourself more. It's where when you are vulnerable with someone and they hear you and you out, now we have a relationship. And this is what happens with God. 
we're vulnerable with God and he becomes our, our, our precious papa. Like he becomes daddy. Like he stops becoming the scary man in the sky and he's right here loving you and hugging you. And then the other definition is that it's the birthplace of creativity and innovation. Woo-hoo, this is like my favorite. <laughs> because I like, I love getting all these like revelations and all these ideas. And um, I'm actually similar to you, Stephanie, where you like to ask questions. And I would ask a lot of questions and I felt like I was too much for some people. And it would get squashed and like, Heidi, stop talking. Or Heidi, stop asking all these questions. But the reality is God gave me he gave me my mind. He had me be the way that I am because he has intended purposes. And so I want to filter that through him. And I want to say, God, okay, what is it that you want me to be? What is it that you want me to do? And give me revelations. I want to create, like, think about things that you guys, like passions that you've had, like different ideas that you've had or things like sparks that you've had, like you want to paint or you want to draw or you want to write or you like riding horses, or there's some dream that you have. Like, God gave that to you. And so when we're able to connect and be vulnerable, those dreams come alive. And then they grow. But if we can't open up and be vulnerable with ourselves, be vulnerable with God, and be vulnerable with other people, then those dreams, they kind of die, or they just like don't go anywhere. We just stay safe. So, and I don't mean you need to be like super crazy or, you know, be evangel- evangelizing. Like, that's what I want to do. And that's what I like to do. But if you don't, like, that's just me. You have to find who you are and dream what you want to dream. Okay? You like, again, you don't compare yourself to anybody else. You be you how God wants you to be. So, Danny Silk says that vulnerability is strength that when you practice it, you become powerful. So that's his definition of it. He writes, oh my gosh, I love his stuff on problems. Google his YouTube video, How to Solve a Problem. It is like so helpful. Um, And so all of us, like there's trust that's growing in each one of us. You know, I know some of you already have trust with each other because you attend the same church. But as we are opening up and even me just kind of being vulnerable tonight there's like more trust and connection that's growing here with all of us but we already had it because we're all sisters in christ like we already had that when you walked in here there already was like a feeling of oh who are you nice to meet you and there's just this connection with everyone because we're all family we're all god's children and again this stuff seems like oh yeah jesus loves me you know, but that really is the cornerstone of, of everything. If we can't be at that place of Jesus loves me, even going to work or doing any of the things, like there's no, it doesn't do any good. Like I remember I, I actually got to a place where it was so tough where I was like, I don't want my business anymore. I'll just live in a van down by the river. Like, I don't want anything. Yes. Like, I, I, then I, literally, I really, I was like, I just, I don't want to do this. And I would, like, submit it all to God. I'd, like, give it to him. And I'd, like, give him my children. I'd give him my husband. I'd give him my business. I'd keep submitting it to him. Like, I don't want it all. And so I'm, like, just surrendering over and over again because I, I just didn't want, I don't, I don't want it to be about me. And because I'm, like, I'm messing it up. And it's not that there's something wrong with me. It's that I want him to be working through me. I want to be the vessel. That's right. So he's using my strengths instead of those weaknesses. So um, anyway, so again, we're going to be going deeper and deeper this weekend. And heaven is being unlocked and more and more and more. And the more real we can be, the more authentic we can be, and just really let ourselves go, the more he comes in. Mm -hmm. And the more he ministers to us, and the more we allow Romans 12 to just happen in our lives. And each one of us is enough, just as we are. Amen. I remember hearing this, and I'm like, oh, what? I don't understand that. (laughs) And like, you're literally enough just sitting there like you don't need to do anything you don't need to plan anything you don't need to think anything you don't have to go anywhere you're just enough Mm -hmm. 
and we're enough because that Jesus died on the cross for us. Like that's because of what He did. Yeah. Like His blood covers it all. I want to just just let just picture His blood just covering everything right now. I just want you to just let let it cover you, and I want you to sit in that place of I am enough. I am enough. You are enough. Thank you for your presence here right now, God. Thank you that we are enough just as we are. Thank you, God, that you are showing more of yourself through each one of us right now. And that we are enough just as we are. And I thank you, God, that we are going glory to glory right now. And then Isaiah 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Because there is darkness in this world, and there is darkness in the people, but the Lord rises above us, and his glory appears on us. It's on each one of us. Each one of us is a glory carrier. And when we get out of the way, we get to be that carrier. And it is an honor that we get to be in that place. We thank you, God, that we are mighty, mighty glory carriers. We thank you that we can be you to other people, to ourselves, to our children, to our families. I want you all to be encouraged that you get to be your true, authentic self. That's how he wants you to be. That's where he is most powerful. It's where healings happen, it's where miracles happen. When we are 100% ourself, because then there is nothing in the world that's getting in the way. It's all you, beautiful you. Beautiful, perfect you. And he loves you the way that you are. When God showed me tonight, like when he, when I asked him about each one of you, I saw Jesus at the back of the room, like hugging you all. Like his arms were just like around this whole room. He just showed me how each one of you are so honoring to him. And I, there's a part of it, I'm like not even qualified to be up here because of what some of you have done and how you have been so faithful to him. And I just feel like he wants you to know that he sees you and he is so pleased with you and he wants you to receive that he sees you. That he's, he sees you and that you are enough. There's some of you that have family members that you are worried about, and he wants you to know I have them. I hear your prayers. You're not doing anything wrong. I am the Holy Spirit. And I will do the work that I say that I will do. Give them to me. Take the burden off of your shoulders. It's not a burden. Your prayers are heard. any of you have something that you're thinking I can feel this on me and it's not for me <laughs> just let it go let him take it just give it to God give it to Jesus